today we're going to go ahead and go over how to set up to connect to your monitor using the ECOM software. What we're going to talk about is how to how you get the software. Then we're going to go ahead and connect to the software with a monitor. We're going to go run through the uh, software itself to show you what capabilities it has and at the end I will show you some of the troubleshooting what if you can't talk to the monitor some of the things you can do to connect to it so with that we're gonna go ahead and fire up the software so now we're gonna go ahead and get the software so what you want to do is go to your bring up a web browser and type in our website, which is www.editraffic.com. What I like to do is just go right into typing in and the search engine, ECC.com, and then it will go and find it for you. There's ways to do it. You can go through product, you can go through traffic, software, but I find that doing this search is the quickest way to get there. And then you want to click on where it says ECOM software, whip down here and go ahead and go software download. Click on that and it will download. Also on this page, we give you an operator's manual and also an overview. So the overview is somewhat what we're going to be talking about today. So once you've downloaded the software and you've run the executable, it's going to be a zip file. And the zip file, you want to hit, go ahead and unzip it. Um, or expand on it and then run the executable. We're going to go ahead and we've already done that, so we're going to go ahead and open the software up. So, some of the things I want to show you here when you have the software open is down here it tells you how you're communicating, or the last time you talked to a monitor, you used the IP or the LAN connection, which is a RJ45 or Ethernet connection. And it was 192.168.1.100, which is our factory setting. And then the IP port is also down here. If you open up your software and it already is illuminated, meaning these aren't grayed out, then you are talking to the unit. But to do it is going up to setup, and make sure that you connect on land if you're connected via Ethernet. If you're using an RS-232, which is a DB9 connector, of course, you would go here. And then you want to make sure that your COM port is correct. But in this case, we're using a land. We are going to be using the default, but I'm going to go ahead and show you that if you're connecting, it's important that if you notice the last time I talked to a unit, this was the unit I connected to. This is its MAC address and its IP address. So now when it highlights and goes gray, that's the unit I'm presently talking to. So I'm going to go ahead and double click and then I'm going to hit test and it shows me that I'm connected. It tells me what I'm connected to. In this case, it's MMU2 16LE smart monitor and all the different versions. A lot of people, if you have problems, I may ask you what version you have. Well, I'm looking for is a monitor version type and then this number here, which is, in this case, it's a 7.3. You want to click on this and say OK. And then we're going to go ahead and talk about this. This is to retrieve an open file. So if you've already saved a log, you can get that. But what we're going to do is connect to the existing monitor right now. So I click on this. And now I'm looking at the monitor. One of the things I'm going to go ahead and make this big is if I hit update all the time, it's going to show me the voltages. In this case, I have a monitor just connected to a 110 volt power supply. No inputs. It's just literally just connected here so I can communicate to it. But here it shows you the voltage that's there and also the temperature, the uh, hertz that it's at. Uh, one of the things I want to show you is it says that it's actually asking the unit all the time, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's the status? If you notice, it's also grayed out here, so you're not able to do anything else until I stop. Once I stop, 
I can do whatever I want, meaning that I can now go ahead and say, give me the configuration. So this is for nuts. It is a nut and a bolt, and it's to get your configuration of your unit. So you can see where it says read only. These are things that are hard coded in, meaning you can't change it. So in this case, if you want to go on minimum flash, you have to go to the program card and change it in the program card. The options are changeable, meaning that you can go ahead and disable if you don't want the uh, re recurring pulse. You can change that. Here's where you would change it. You can also change for flashing yellow arrow is right here too. A lot of times we'll ask you when you have problems, can you send me the configuration? And people bring this up and say, well, how do I send this? Well, you can save to a file, save to a monitor. I'm sorry, save to a file, save to a monitor. This is load from a file, load from a monitor. So that's one way you can do it. The other way is under Git Logs and Configuration. And this is the configuration. So it shows you the program card and how it's jumped and all your settings. I'm going to go ahead and expand this. So when I do this, if you notice, it says unsaved. And it's because I haven't saved this. So if I want to... I will be able to just save this one file. But let's talk about the header here so you know what's going on. Here it tells you what kind of log it is. It's a configuration log. This is the monitor ID. If you had a name on the unit, it would also give you that. This tells you what kind of unit it is. In this case, it's a smart monitor uh, and it's running this firmware and communication. Uh, this is the version of software we're running for ECCOM. This is when you downloaded it and the date with the understanding is this is coming from the monitor. So if your monitor has got the wrong date and time, you're going to reflect that. So if you're in a TS2 cabinet, you should, the controller should automatically give the monitor the correct date and time. If you're in a TS1 cabinet or a Caltrans cabinet, you have to tell the monitor the date and time. Status of the intersection, real time, configuration. This is a checksum. Occasionally, we might ask you for this because if there's a problem with the monitor, this is just a manufacturer. We want to have you grab the checksum for us. The other thing is the logs. So when you hit get logs, or if you hit up here, get all logs, either one of these two buttons will do the exact same thing. And what it'll do is get all the logs, including the signal sequence file, which is what you saw with the pretty colors. The last file that it will get is the chronological log. And what that is, is going to give you all the logs. So if you want to just save all the logs in one shot, you want to save the chronological because it'll give you everything from the, the monitor resets, the power, the configuration, and the previous faults. So this is where, and if you notice, it just says unsaved. So here we're going to go ahead and I'm going to save it in a directory when it opens up here. And then I have my computer set up to where we have city tech files. And I'm going to say files from city. And in this case, we're going to call this Bob and Johnson, name of an intersection. So now if you notice up here, it tells me the path that I'm on and here it even tells you Bob and Johnson. So if I bring this all the way out, Bob and Johnson, or B Bob and John. So this is now logged and saved. So if you only want to connect, collect one log, this is it. The rest of them are actually the individual logs. So this gives you just a log for the previous faults. You have the AC events showing you when the units were turned on and off. And if you notice the word unsaved is there because we're not, I haven't saved it, but to save it's the same way you would come up here and go save or hit here and name it. Here's just for the resets, record of all the resets, and here's the record of the configuration. The last log I'm going to show you, and it's really not a log, it's a signal sequence file, and this is going to show you the last five problems, and on that it will tell you 30 seconds before you had the problem. So let's see if we have anything. I think we're going to have only port faults here everywhere. And we are. 
but it's not the last one. So here, this is a type fault, which is not going to help. I'm going to go ahead and grab one from the log. So this time I'm opening a signal sequence file log, and I'm going to grab one from Alaska. And if you notice, these are the logs. What I want to do is go signal sequence log, and I'm going to grab a previous signal sequence log. So here we have a dual indication, and you can see that it went into fault right here. And here's your dual indication on channel 8. You have a red and green on simultaneously. But before that was happening, we were in a flash mode. Because if you notice, you got the intersection is flashing. So here's a shows you 30 seconds before what happens. So this looks like the monitor was trying to come out of flash and it was not successfully able to come out of flash because there's a dual indication. Let's go here. Here we have a skip yellow. And if you notice, you should never go from a green to a red. So we did have a skip yellow. So now we can go back and look at this to see if we see any telltale signs of what's going on. So this intersection looked like it was running perfectly fine on two and six. And then all of a sudden something happened. And in this case, I wanna say right at this point here, it triggered and the controller tried to take the intersection to the startup command. So in this case, in the startup command, you go from all red and then on to yellow. So I would say that this is giving me an indication that there was something that happened or a glitch that happened with the controller. So this is some of the benefits you can get with the signal sequence file. It tells you what's going on. The little help bubble just tells you the information about the monitor. Go ahead and close that out. And then up here, it's pretty much the same thing. Status, here's where you can set your clock. You can get it or set it. Monitor ID information, uh, your configuration, so you can grab it from here too. One of the things I want to show you is you can clear all. So this clears all your logs on the monitor. Signal sequence file, get and open files. You can also do your file manager. The last thing I want to show you is the help. And firmware update, you can request firmware updates from Eberly, and we can ship that to you. Then about the monitor, and then, of course, about ECOM. So now we're going to talk about some things that might happen or troubleshooting problems that you may have when the if ECOM doesn't work. What I want to show you now is what it should look like when you're connected to the, the monitor. Right now, you'll see a flashlight on the green when you, by itself. That means you're talking to the Ethernet board. When you see the flash of the comm, that lets you know that you're talking to the processor of a monitor. So you're actually really talking to the monitor. These are what you want to see when you are talking to the unit successfully. So with that, I'm going to stop the ECOM. I am physically disconnecting the monitor from the software or the laptop. So when I click here, click and start the software, what it's going to try to do is connect uh, automatically. And usually it, it tries to remember the, the last path. Well, in this case is a 192.168.1.100. And if you notice, it did not successfully connect because you see it's all grayed out. So things that you might want to check, and it will give you this too. So usually when you get this network connection, it could be multiple things. It could be you don't have the monitor connected, you don't have the monitor turned on, or you have a bad cat 5 wire, or your network card is not correctly configured, which we'll talk about too, because when you do, and I'm going to show you basic computer stuff, you're going to go down here to your search, and you're going to type in CMD, and you're going to get your. And at this point, we're going to find out. Okay, you your laptop has to be in the same network as the monitor is. So the best way to check that is go IP config. And here are we're connected to Ethernet uh, port seven. 
and here we know our network is correctly configured because 192, 168, 101 is a problem. You really want that to be one and then something else because, and I'm going to try to ping it now, 192, 168, 1, 100, and it won't ping because we're not on the same network. So that's one thing that could be an issue too, that you're not on the same network. I went ahead and made sure that I connected my laptop and put it into 192, 168 mode, or you can look again, type in IP config. And if you notice, I'm on the right network. So here I can also, if I would like, ping the monitor itself, which I'm going to. Here we're pinging. So now when I come here, go to come and do the same thing, network, search, wait to this highlights, because right now this is just showing you the last thing we connected to. If you notice, it said not responding. And on your unit itself, you should see the green flashing light on the RJ45 connector. And here we're connected. It actually glitched. We're going to do it again. When you see it go blue, that means we are talking to it. And here it's talking. You can also go to configure device and change what you want. If you want to give it a gateway, if you want to change your IP, that's all right here. This is the factory defaults 10,000, 10,001. And I'm going, I always like to click on that, go here, hit test. And we know we're talking. So that's pretty much it. If you have other problems or cannot connect to it, please feel free to contact me at 602 three nine six one two eight four and that's tech support for Eberly Design. Thank you for your attention and I hope this helps you.